Back in February, I managed to catch three queen ants of the species Myrmecocystus testaceus, the brick honeypot ant. Since then, we've been following the stories of Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup, and the challenges that come with trying to found a new colony. They've been putting in the hard work of laying eggs, feeding larvae with their own nutrient reserves, and waiting patiently in hopes they make it to the day when they welcome their first daughters into the world. And last time you saw them, they were getting very close. When we left them, Blossom was well in the lead with five cocoons, four larvae, and about 13 eggs. Bubbles had six larvae and nine eggs, and Buttercup had five larvae and about 30 eggs grouped in piles around her. We also discovered that one of the infertile queens named Debbie started grouping her eggs together, which could be a sign that she might be fertile after all. Side note, there have been a handful of you informing me that there is a fourth Powerpuff Girl, to which I respectfully say, I don't care. Moving on. Two weeks later, and it was time to check on their progress. Blossom is once again in the lead, now with 14 cocoons, one larva, and a bunch of eggs. She is performing above and beyond my expectations. Bubble's brood is still growing, but for some reason is having a hard time. Her brood pile is larger than before, but it's kind of hard to tell what's what. Is that a leg? She also has a few randomly scattered eggs around the tube. Buttercup's five larvae have now turned into five cocoons, with some other larvae, eggs, and whatever this is. Looks like a pupa that forgot to make a cocoon? I didn't even know that could happen. Some species don't make cocoons, but these do, so that's unusual. But the big question on my mind is, what about Debbie? Could she surprise us? Hi, Debbie. Unfortunately, a lot of her eggs are scattered around the tube once more, which is a common indicator of infertility. But I do see a blurry clump of eggs, so we'll give her more time. Ten days later, and I had a good feeling when I went to check on Blossom. Alright, let's go! We have a colony! This moment always makes me so happy to see these little ones freshly born, but already eager to do any work the colony needs. But work requires energy, so let's give them their first meal and see how they respond. Stimulated by the movement, the colony began to stir. One brave worker boldly led the charge down the tube, followed by one of her sisters. But upon reaching the mysterious food object, she chickened out and ran away. I watched them do this little dance for a while, daring each other to go touch it like the butt scene from Finding Nemo. I'm gonna go touch the butt! One of them didn't know what to do, but felt the need to be productive, so she started moving this cocoon shell around with no particular goal in mind. This doesn't seem to be going anywhere fast, so let's check on the others. Bubbles still doesn't have any workers, but she does have a pupa. Buttercup, on the other hand, now has her first two workers, and they're ghostly white, which means they probably just emerged earlier today. It looks like she also has more cocoons ready to hatch soon, so we can officially call them a colony. Let's give them some food as well. I waited for a response, but nothing happened. Sometimes it takes a while, so I left both tubes exposed while I did other things so I could catch the action when something finally happened. I wonder how Debbie's doing. Hi Debbie. Still no larva I see. I'm sorry girl. I noticed her reaching for her clump of eggs, like she just wanted a little more time to try. Okay Debbie, but it's not your fault if it doesn't happen. Back to the other colonies. In Blossom's test tube, we have this one doing a little jig of some kind. Hey, you do you. And another worker had finally touched the butt, I mean, uh, fruit fly, which is good protein to help the other brood grow. I can tell that this one had a good drink of nectar by her inflated abdomen. And you can see the chemical communication happening in real time as those workers who found food are now emitting pheromones that say, I just found some food over there and it was pretty good. Notice how the queen's antennas are waving around here as she picks up the message. Blossom hasn't had a meal in 77 days at this point, so she hungry and was lured away from her throne by the thought of drinking some of that tasty nectar. But a queen needs to play it safe and decided to be patient and head back. Whereas no one had to tell Queen Buttercup there was food, she was the first to mosey on up to the dish all by herself while her daughters stayed behind. 
but she too got nervous about venturing too far from the throne and decided to turn back. I left them alone for a day and came back to find very different results. Blossom's colony had completely covered their dish in dirt. I guess that means they're done. I've heard that ants bury their used food sources to prevent other colonies from finding it. That's pretty cool that they know to do that on instinct. Buttercup's dish, on the other hand, did not have a speck of dirt on it, but there was something in the nectar. One of her only two workers had gotten stuck and drowned. I don't know why this happened, but any casualties at this delicate stage are detrimental to the colony's chances of survival. Fortunately though, two weeks later and Buttercup has had five more workers join the party. She and her colony are looking very well fed, as you can see by how full of nectar their gasters are. Good news for Bubbles is that she finally has her first daughter. The bad news is she only has one, and I don't see a lot of other brood. I'm not sure why she's so behind. Blossom has now gone from 9 workers to 15. Her colony is off to a healthy start, and I'm growing confident that she's going to be our winner. And now it's time for my favorite part giving our new colonies a name and identity. I've had a lot of colonies over the last year and a half, which represent a lot of lessons learned on how to care for these amazing creatures. So if you've had colonies die, don't feel bad. It's part of the process. And honeypots in particular are not a beginner species, especially when starting from a single queen. So the fact that we have two promising colonies is amazing. Bubbles still only has one worker, and sadly, it doesn't look like there are any more on the way. Since they aren't much of a colony, I'm going to hold off on giving them a name unless she's somehow able to turn things around. Let's start with our leading champion, Blossom, who has been in first place since the beginning. I wanted something that went well with her floral name, but wasn't too cutesy or girly. I landed on the Rosebuds, because roses are beautiful and they have thorns and their repletes can resemble little flower buds, ready to provide sweet nectar to the colony. Now for Buttercup's colony. I'd thrown around a bunch of ideas, but one name that started as a joke just seemed to stick. It's kinda dumb, but also fits perfectly. Hear me out. Her name is Buttercup, which makes me think of a peanut butter cup, but also after the Powerpuff Girls, right? And honeypot ants also puff up like balloons. So the only logical combination of those concepts is... Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs, peanut butter chocolate flavor. Reese's Puffs, Reese's I told you it was kind of dumb, but I actually love it. The rosebuds are doing well enough that I'm going to give them a small outworld to make feeding easier. And there we go. Eventually, I want to move them into this setup once they have enough workers. Honeypot ants need a ceiling for the repletes to hang from to store food so top-down nests won't work, and upright formicariums like this provide that ceiling, but can be pretty dark for me to capture on camera because pressing my lens up against the glass blocks most of the light. But this one lets light in on both sides, so I'll be able to capture those beautiful repletes in full glory. I'll continue to keep an eye on Bubbles, but her chances aren't looking good. Sometimes this just happens, which is why ant colonies play the numbers game and release thousands of queens in hopes a handful of them will make it through and grow mature colonies. Remember that I started with 8 queens, and it looks like Bubbles and Debbie just didn't make the cut. We do have the Rosebuds and the Reese's Puffs though, that have made it to the colony stage, which is a big victory. But our honeypot ants aren't out of the woods yet, as I've said before, these ants are very sensitive in the early stages. I'm optimistic based on their progress, but there's no guarantee that they'll make it to a thriving colony. And I've already started to face their next challenge. They don't seem to be eating any protein. The rosebuds even picked up the fruit fly I gave them and dropped it into the nectar dish. Maybe in protest? Maybe for added flavor? I don't know. I tried filling the other side with fresh nectar and one worker came out to inspect. She wasn't interested though and went back inside. I don't see them come out very often, and both colonies don't seem to have much of an appetite in general. But Queen Blossom and the other workers look well fed on nectar, so I guess they're okay. The rosebuds have a bunch of cocoons which don't need any food, but they do have larvae too which needs protein to grow. The queens also need protein to keep laying eggs. Queen Buttercup looks nice and fat with nectar as well, so I'm not too worried. 
I've started to give them different types of food in hopes that they'll start eating again. I've learned that young colonies can be super picky about their diet, and it may just be a matter of finding something they like. Or it could just be that they don't need much protein right now because they're so small. The day before I posted this video, Bubbles had a surprise in store. She had another worker. Even better, she had larvae that were moving around. This gave me hope that she might be able to pull through and raise her own colony after all. However their next chapter unfolds, I'm rooting for these little ants and have big hopes for their future. Will they start eating again and continue to grow? Will we eventually get to watch them outgrow their test tube and move into a new home? Could Bubbles catch up and turn her luck around? We'll just have to wait and see as the story of the ants marches on. If you enjoyed this story, drop a like and check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching.